everyone. Welcome back to the latest Gemphazone special episode. This time we're going to take a look at unwrapping. We will start with a basic introduction. Then we want to have a look at essential rules on the basis of that P90 here in the background. I then want to go through some script and a plugin that I use a lot. And then at the end, I'm going to have a full explanatory unwrap where I apply all sorts of different techniques to get that job done. So I hope that at the end, this will be a good video for everyone who wants to learn more about unwrapping. So why do we actually have to unwrap? It's all a matter of applying textures to our low poly model and also baking down our high poly information onto it. So in order to do that, we need to unfold our low poly model into a 2D canvas. And once we have that done, we can then start baking out our textures, the normal map and the AO and curvature map and whatever else we need to start texturing. So that here gives you the idea. We have our low poly model. And then you can see there I have some details, the so-called floaters that we already had a look at in the high poly special that just add more detail than there actually is. So that is the basic idea behind the unwrap. We want to make sure we have a good basis for baking down our maps and start texturing. So in order for us to do that, we have to first of all decide what it is that we want to unwrap. And in that case here, the P90, we want to make sure we fit it all on one texture. So you have to be clear what it is that you want to have on one texture before you start. Because let's just assume that we had like a scope here on top. In that case, you would want to have it on a separated texture so that you could also just swap it out with a, on top of another weapon. And it only loads the texture that is actually required for us to have that scope, for example. So you wouldn't want to just merge something onto the same texture just for the sake of it, because once again, you have to think about the attachments and the customizability later on. So for a weapon like that, the P90, it's perfectly reasonable to have one texture only for it. And it's then really up to you how high risk you have it in the game. In general, for first person shooters, I would say a 2K resolution is standard. So that would be here then a 2K map. And by the way, that would look like this here later on. Like once we're done texturing, this here is our roughness map. This is the normal map. And what else do we got? We have the metallic map here. So this is all basically based on the PBR metallic rough workflow. And that would also be what you want to check into the game later on, the texture together with a low poly model. And we are back to 3D Max here with the UV editor opened, which if you are brand new to it, looks quite intimidating. You can always watch my full tutorials where I go through the full process of unwrapping an object such as the grenade or the blade or even the AK. Uh, for that case here, I'm going to actually unwrap something smaller later on. For now, I just want to really take a look at these UV islands that we have here and see if there can be something said about some general rules that may apply. So for a starter, this here is called our UV map because it really is a map that helps us finding where our stuff is later on. So that element here, the back of the stock, is this piece right there. So everything translates one to one that we unwrap here to our texture later on. This is why it's important that we don't waste any space. As you can see, I try to squeeze everything in here as much as possible without having too much open gaps here. And that just ensures that our texture later on has the maximum available resolution for the texture that we then save out. So let's see if we can find any so-called golden rules or standards that can always be applied. And I think that the most important thing to keep in mind is that you want to avoid hard edges in your UV islands. And by hard edges, I mean that, for example, the back of the stock here, which I unwrapped as one piece, would not make sense to then take these faces here 
into it. Like you wouldn't start welding that here together on that UV island. Not only would it result in some weird stretching, but it would also just mess up your normal map, especially because every one of these UV islands that you see here has its own smoothing group later on. So once we're done basically setting all that up, we tell 3D Max that each one represents one smoothing group and that ensures the ideal normal map bake. That is a very important thing to keep in mind. And for that, by the way, I'm going to show that later how we're actually doing that with the smoothing groups. But for that, it's just important to keep in mind to go with the flow. Like for example, if I select that element here, you can see that it follows this curve here, but I would then avoid to have that piece here attached here on top of it. Because once again, that would only result in a bizarre looking normal map. The same can be said here for that piece. Once again, I was following that curve here all the way up to here where then we have like a relatively hard edge. So that piece here, I put it on its own tiny UV island in order for the normals to work the best way on there. The same down here. This is a perfectly separated piece here and you want to avoid welding that here together. Like you wouldn't want to have this year together in one UV island that would completely mess things up. And you can see that, for example, uh, this here is perfectly chamfered. So that makes then for the perfect stripe unwrap here. I want to keep that here as one element. And of course, somewhere I have to put my, my UV seam. So I have it down here. But other than that, we don't need to like unwrap these here individually. And then that would be one UV island. We keep that here as one UV island because once again, it follows the flow. So while we are looking at these stripes, I also want to have a look at something like that here. That here could potentially also be unwrapped like that. But that would then result, if I push that out here to the side, in your normal map to really have a lot of zigzagging like the you want to make sure that everything is perfectly as straight as it can be on your uv borders so that would be the exact opposite of that there is nothing straight on that and that would result in a very low resolution strange looking map here it would just look uh, like bad quality as opposed to keeping it in that stripe unwrap, which then just makes sure that all these pixels here are aligned and there is no zigzagging anywhere. It's just pure pixel information lined up next to each other. And that will also look like a quality bake then on that piece. So if you ever have like this weapon in a death cam or something and you see it up close shoved in the camera, then that would look better than having it like as that cylindrical unwrap that is just like a pure quick planar map. The same goes here for these UV borders. Always try to keep it as straight as possible, even if it comes with a price of a little bit of a distortion. It will just generally look better if you keep your borders straight as much as you can. So that would be a few rules that I find is always worth mentioning, trying to avoid that zigzagging as much as you can. Follow the flow when it comes to the actual UV borders and apply one smoothing group to each UV island. That is required for the perfect normal map bake. And I'm going to collapse everything down here to one mesh just for demonstrating how that works with the smoothing groups. So right now, since this is the model that I already set up, I'm going to destroy the smoothing groups here by clearing them all. And now I'm making use of text tools here. Text tools has been around since I think over a decade by now. I mean, I'm not 100% sure, but you can get it for free here. It's a free plugin. It's very easy to install, really just follow that 
small little GIF here, and that's all that you have to do. And then it will appear here as that little sidebar. And now the beauty is that in order for us to do these smoothing groups, we don't have to place them by hand once we're done unwrapping. We just go over to tools and we tell it smoothing groups from UV shells. So it will then calculate a moment. And once it's done, you can see that it set all these smoothing groups wherever we have our UV island in place. So if I toggle that here, it does it here through a added poly modifier. You can see it's now pretty much done. And then we collapse that down here, collapse all. You can even close the text tools if you want. And that means that now we have our low poly model here ready for texturing pretty much as long as your high poly would also be done. And we are back to another scene in which I want to show you how I approach such an unwrap. Um, I'm going to actually unwrap the whole low poly again. I already unwrapped it in the past. And right now I pretty much did that here, quick planer to really destroy everything that I had on it before. And before we get more into it, I wanted to point something out to you, which is that all my free stuff can now be found here on my Google Drive. I'm going to share the link in the description. So from now on, this is where you can find all my reference images and essential files that go along with the free tutorials. Um, because people keep asking where to find it and it just makes it more convenient. And also some of the other places started charging me money for each download that I get, even if it's free. So within here, we have a useful stuff folder, 3 Max scripts, and then there's a smart stitch in there. And you want to install that, or at least I find it a very useful script to have. In order to install it, you go to new script and obviously I already have it installed. So I just show you quickly how to do that. You would then go to open and you would go to your scripts folder. You can just save it, download it here into your 3 Max scripts folder. Then you double click smart stitch and it will then appear as this here. And then all you have to do is go to tools, evaluate all. And then within the customized user interface, I have it set to shift plus S. I mean, it's up to you where you want to have it, but you will then find here the smart stitch and just make sure it has a shortcut. And then we are ready to use it. I'm going to show you what it's doing right away. So let's just say this thing here, I'm going to flatten map it. And now we have like all these pieces here, such as that. And you want then to attach the other piece, which shows here, it indicates as a blue line that this belongs together. You want to attach it together like that. So that would already be pretty much one UV island that I keep as one. And you can see how I was just pressing that shortcut here in order to attach it to it. You want to also make sure that in order for that script to work, um, you go to, let me see where it is, stitch selected and make sure that you have align clusters and scale clusters checked and the bias is set to zero. So once you have that, you can save current settings as default and it will always apply these settings and it's needed for that smart script, uh, smart stitch script to work properly. Okay, I'm going to collapse everything once more. And usually the way that I start is by picking out one of the pieces and I take it into isolation view. This is one element here. And then there are a lot of different ways that I could get started here. For example, since I already worked with some smoothing groups here before in order to define the uh, chamfering, you know how in the high poly special, I, I was showing how I like to use smoothing groups in combination with a chamfer modifier, which is why I already end up having some smoothing groups. 
they might not be exactly the same that I want to have for my low poly, but they already give me a head start and a good basis to work with. And that means that I can use that uh, tool that is here within the uh, editor, which is, if I find it, they changed the UI in 2017, so I have a bit of a hard time sometimes. Um, and what I wanna do is select my whole element here and I finally found it. It's called Flatten by Smoothing Group. So once I click that, it already lays everything out here as good as it can according to where I have my smooth groups in place. So that's definitely a good head start, but it may sometimes mess things up because it doesn't really relax our stuff. So if I put our text tools on here, and go into the checker pattern view, then you can see that some of these pieces are stretched in a very strange way, which we actually don't wanna have. So in order to solve that, I would then just select everything and you want to select the peel mode. You could also use the relax modifier, which is, um, where do we have it? This one here but you can see how it really messes things up in a weird way. And that's kind of strange because actually the relax is the one that people would think does the job, but in reality, it's the peel mode that does that. So I click that now, and now you can see everything, aside from it not being perfectly aligned here, is, is like, super relaxed and it's still kept as a straight selection that doesn't have any weird distortion on it as with a relax. So now this is pretty much already a done piece here and all that's left to do is going back into our text tools um, and I go into edge mode. By the way, we can now disable the peel mode and then here on that edge, I just click align to make sure that these edges are perfectly straightened. And I wanna do the same thing everywhere. So that was the wrong button. I just click my way through here. In some cases, it's already perfectly fine. And let's see where else we have to do it. Align and align. So there's one more here. Let me just double check which piece that was. Okay, I guess that piece down here, you can see even though we have a hard edge, I decided to keep that all in one group because you would never really see it. So that means that I could also go over here and now use that stitch thing to stitch that piece back on there and then align it to also make sure it's straight. Here's another one. And I wanna have a look at that piece here. That looks a little strange and distorted. I don't know exactly why, but sometimes the peel mode messes it up. So you have to always double check. And I will just do another quick planar on it. So here we go. So with that done, one thing becomes pretty obvious, which is that the resolution is quite different here on that piece. So the way to fix that is just to select everything that you got and then you hit that rescale elements button. And now you can see that it just converted everything to the same density or texel ratio as, as it's also called. And now I see that that thing here got also messed up. So I'm gonna just quick planar it. Quick planar button can be found here, by the way. I got it on a shortcut. And we have that thing here that needs alignment and also that one here. And other than that, we can push that out of the way. For now, I don't actually care that the resolution is different because once I'm done unwrapping, I'm gonna just hit the rescale element on everything that we have. Let me just select everything here and apply that checker pattern to everything. 
and we are already at 20 minutes. Usually I prefer to have these special episodes shorter than the actual tutorials, but I want to make sure I really show everything that I talked about earlier here on that example. So I'm going to make a selection here for these faces. And this time I use flatten mapping. I often like to start with a flatten mapping. And usually what it does, if you look at these seams here, it puts them sometimes in cases, especially on these stripes where it doesn't really make a hundred percent sense, especially since this is all the same curve. So why would it then just make that break here? But it's no problem because we use that uh, smart stitch script from earlier and just make sure that we weld everything here into its place. So now we have these pieces here as UV island. And then here where the hard edge is, we have then these stripes as individual UV islands. So next, I'm going to just take that thing here, grow the selection, hit the quick planar on it. And then with the rest of the selection that's left, I'm going to do the same thing here with a quick planar. So now all that we have to do is once again, I'm going to use the peel mode to make sure everything is perfectly relaxed. And let me just push that out of the way here. Everything that we have here. And I just want to once again align it so that it is perfectly straight and our normal map won't have any weird zigzagging going on. And not sure what happened there. So now, once again, I'm going to make sure later that everything has the same texel density. For now, let's just continue with the next big piece that we got here. And in that case, it's probably easiest to just take what we had earlier. And I think I already started with the smoothing group. Or actually, I'm not sure. Either way, I'm going to start here with a smoothing group and that results in some funky stretching, which we need to sort out once again here with a peel mode. So often you click that peel mode and then it really ends up looking like that. It's a big mess and that can quickly be resolved by hitting the pack custom. So after we do that, it already becomes a bit easier here to see what we were up to. I'm gonna get out of the peel mode can start aligning these uh, groups here. Let me align that all over the place. In that case here, I'm going to just have it like this. Like, unfortunately, we can't have it perfectly straight everywhere. Like a case like that here, we just have to make a decision where we want it to be the straight selection pretty much and everything else. I actually want that here to be separated. So this here, I'm going to separate out. And now we might need another. Let me see. In that case, I may as well just use the relax. And actually, no, that was already pretty perfect the way it was. So let's continue with aligning that stuff. And what else do we got this piece here? And that here is too much of a hard edge. So I'm going to also quick planer that here. And other than that, this is solid stuff. Like I look at this UV island here. And as you can see, once again, I was really following the flow here. Wherever we have some nice round chamfering going on, it's all connected until the point where we have like a hard edge. So then this would be the next piece here all the way to there. And then once again, all the way down here so that we make sure whatever has a hard edge is separated. And then we can once again continue with the next piece.
So for that piece here, I want to have yet another approach. I'm just going to use quick planar here on most of these elements that I want to keep as one UV island each. So let me just go through here and quick planar it. Once again, you can find it here. I have it on a shortcut. And let me show you what we can do in a case like that here, where I take all that, I also quick planar it, and then I want to give it the peel. And now that piece here, we haven't defined where our UV cut actually is. So all I have to do is click here, and then I go over here to the convert edge selection to seams. And that unfolds it perfectly along that edge and gives us a nice stripe. So let's continue. And let's just take these two here and also I'm gonna quick planar it, followed by the peel. And you wanna make sure you're out of the peel mode before you move your islands. Let's take that piece here and I'm gonna actually also peel it. So now we are left with a piece here that already has a bit of a curvature here on the model. So it has a bit of a different thickness, which gives us something that is not ideal here. And what we can do in that case is just select that edge and that edge, and then make a loop selection. Go over here to that thing, press it down, and then select this one here under it. So that gives us that. And you can do the same thing here with a ring selection. And then just do the same down here. So now we have it perfectly straight laid out. And these things here then just require again some alignment. Same as this and same as that funny looking one here. And not sure why that just messed up. Sometimes it does that. And these pieces over here would then also just require another peel mode. Let me align that one here. And these ones here, I think we haven't peeled them yet. So that's why we see some stretching here. Let me do that. And once again, align. And now we have that unwrapped as well. Let's hope you didn't already fall asleep watching me unwrap. Let me show you a really nice tool here almost at the end of the episode. It's this one, the unfold strip from loop. So what it does is it's perfect for cylindrical objects such as that. Once you're in edge mode, you just define where you want to have your seam going. You hit that button and then it just lays it out here as this strip. And then all that's left is go to the rest of your selection, quick planar it, and maybe you want to give it a peel to make sure it's relaxed. And that is that. So now I think we only have two pieces left. And it already looks pretty much unwrapped, but just for the sake of it, let's just use that uh, tool here again. Unfold strip. And here we go. Perfect unwrap. And let's repeat that process here on our last piece. Once again, we define our edge and then we just hit that button and it makes a stripe out of it. We could have already made use of that tool earlier, but I wanted to make sure to give you the big picture. Always good to know more than one way to achieve something. So the next thing I want to do is make a selection on all these seven objects and I collapse them all down for now at least. Because the reason for doing that is that next thing we have to do is go back and make sure that everything is selected. And now it's important to hit that rescale elements. And sometimes if they are separated objects, that doesn't work very well. So clicking it now gives us exactly that here. And that is what we need to have, like the perfect texel ratio or density all over our mesh. So we are almost there. All that's left to do is make sure that this mess here gets put into our UV canvas here so that we can finally bake our texture and start texturing. And that is really not as much of a work anymore than the actual puzzling before. Now what we can do is uncheck rescale here, 
under arrange elements and then hit that pack normalize button. And what that does is it already packs everything into the UV canvas and that could already be potentially our texture. However, I find that there is still a bit too much space here that is unused. So what we can do is put the padding to zero one, make it a bit tighter, hit that button again. And now you see we have still some space, but overall our UV islands got bigger, which just results in more resolution that we have. And one thing that you could do now potentially is take a look at your mesh and we would probably never see that element down here. Like that would be the only element that most likely you would never see. So what I want to do is scale it down quite a bit. I still want it to be part of the texture, but now I can repeat that step again here, pack normalize. And it just made sure that all these islands here got bigger in contrast to the one that we just told it to be smaller. So now we gained a few extra pixels probably. So that's really the whole thing here. Some people might be surprised that I make use of that here and I don't really do a lot of uh, hand custom packing. Um, that might be necessary in a lot of cases, but for an object like that here, it pretty much already did a great job on it. So we can use this. And the last step that's involved would then be to go over here to text tools again and very important to tell it smoothing groups from UV shells. So that's the last step. I'm going to collapse that down. That is our low poly model now that we can export over to Substance Painter or any other software where we want to do our baking and our texturing. And just at the end of our episode, I wanted to have a quick look at our old friend, the grenade for the case that you watched the free tutorial here on YouTube. And especially because that body here has some distortion going on. And I didn't really apply that rule that I was saying to always separate our hard edges to have its own UV island. So in that case, I thought it was more desirable to really keep the whole unwrap here as one cylindrical unwrap, which is just nice to have it as one smoothing group object. And it does come with the price of having some distortion here in the inside. But then once again, it's a bit of an organic shape. And if you would zoom in here, you would really barely ever notice it. Even though we have this distortion here, it's not like you really see it. So that would be one exception that may every once in a while appear where you just want to say, I keep everything in one smoothing group. However, in most cases such as here, you would just have to make sure that everything is properly split into its smoothing groups and into its UV islands. And I just wanted to make sure to mention it because some people were a bit concerned about that distortion, but then again, it's a price worth paying. You barely see it and usually you would have your UV islands more separated than that. So I hope you liked that special episode. In the next one, we're going to take a look at baking, the best settings and how to make sure we get the most out of our high poly and low poly. For the latest updates, make sure to follow the Facebook Chemphazone page and have a look at forum.chemphazone.com. If you ever have any questions, chances are it's already been answered here. And if not, then just sign up and make a new thread for it. I'll be seeing you soon. Happy modeling and cheers.